Bienvenidos todos de nuevo aquí en su Radio de la Comunidad KFAI, Corazón Latino con Eva y Carla. So, es la una con once aquí en su Radio de la Comunidad. Y tenemos unos invitados especiales. Y, oye, se me olvidó uh, preguntarles a ustedes, ¿hablemos en español o en inglés? Como quieran. Vamos a empezar en inglés. Español, bueno, <risa> vamos, a vamos a empezar en español, pues, sí. y después aclaramos todo en inglés. Claro que sí, okay. como quieran. Bienvenidos, este, Marisa y... Nerella, ¿no? Be Nerella. 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 Nerella, perdón. Nerella, este, uh, unos invi unas invitadas de la Casa de España aquí en Minnesota. Casa de España en Minnesota es un grupo, pues, que tiene cuánto tiempo en formación. Se fundó, en actividad. Uh -huh. Se fundó en 2010. Somos una non-profit. Ok, 2010. Y, y pues con la, la, la el propósito siendo para traer la cultura de España a, a nosotros los minnesotanos. ¿verdad? Efectivamente, la de España y de cualquier país hispanohablante para poder difundirlo aquí en Minnesota. Ajá. Y Nerea, ustedes son directores, ¿verdad? Sí. Uh -huh. sí, Marisa es presidente y yo me dedico un poco a la actividad cultural. Ok, muy bien. Bueno, well, este, tenemos un evento eh, muy especial que viene el 25-26 de febrero. Eh, eh, continúa marzo 3, 4 y 5 de varios tipos de música y quiero que a ustedes nos hablen de esto, por favor. Bueno, pues... Eh, bueno, este es el primer festival que Casa de España organiza en Minnesota y, bueno, queríamos un poco traer la música que es menos conocida de la cultura uh -huh. española, la queríamos traer un poco a, aquí a Minnesota y un poco salir de los tópicos como el flamenco, por ejemplo. Sí. Y queríamos un poco centrarnos en otro tipo de músicas y en otras culturas también que han estado en contacto con la música española. Como la, la música sefardita, por ejemplo. Exacto, como la música sefardita, claro. la música, en este caso también tenemos un concierto de música peruana, eh, otra también de música argentina, y bueno, eso, eso también tenemos a Boccherini, y bueno, pues queríamos hacer un poco eso, queríamos ampliar un poco más el abanico de, de posibilidades de la música española. Este... Cuéntanos, eh, bueno, tenemos cuatro tipos de música aquí, el boquerine que se van a presentar, es la cefardía, el trujillo de Perú y música de este, art songs de Argentina y de España. Cuéntanos, eh, empezando con el boquerine, ¿qué es el boquerine? Bueno, pues Luigi Boquerini era un compositor italiano que llegó a España en, durante el siglo XVIII cuando los borbones llegaron, la dinastía de los borbones llegaron a España. Y bueno, en, en aquella época estaba muy de moda la música italiana, entonces la corte decidió eh, contratar a los músicos más influyentes o más importantes italianos para traer la música a España. Y entonces, bueno, pues Lu Luigi Boccherini, eh, su mayor producción de, mu de música sucedió en España. Y bueno, tenemos muchas de sus músicas, está inspirada de hecho en el folclore español. Ah. Como el flamenco, como la seguidilla, las, claro. las, los bailes españoles. Uh -huh. Y bueno, entonces todo el mundo piensa que Boccherini es un compositor italiano, pero digamos que los españoles lo consideramos español. Lo han ad adoptado. Sí, exacto. <risa> <risa> exacto. Ya no es italiano. Just to briefly um, talk in English a little bit about where we are in our conversation, we're talking uh -huh. about the International Spanish Music Festival presented by Casa de España, uh, coming up February 25th, 26th, March 3rd, 4th, and 5th, featuring um, music that uh, may not be typically associated for us Minnesotans that... Uh, to these countries that uh, Casa España would like to share with us and has organized with some incredible musicians to bring to us. First of all, the Bocarine string trios and quartets will be playing at St. Mark's Cathedral, Episcopal Cathedral, 519 Oak Grove in Minneapolis. And that's Thursday, February 25th at 7.30. And um, the, the music, the Bocarine music comes from from Bulgarini, who was an Italian composer, but who really kind of jumped ship, went to Spain, and was extremely influenced by flamenco music, seguidillas, all sorts of Spanish dances, and really 
We don't think of him anymore as Italian. We think of him as Spanish. And if he, <laughs> he may have right, he may have been born Italian, but he's very important in Spain. And so that's one thing. And um, so, how old is this music, Boccherini? Well, it was written during the 18th century. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it must be beautiful. Uh, yeah, it is. It's like um, the style is like a Mozart style. We can we can like a so Baroque now a little bit. It's classical not? style. Yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. So it sounds like a let's say Mozart or that kind of a style, mm -hmm. but with this like a, a Spanish like a spice mm -hmm, on it. Mm -hmm, uh -huh. mm -hmm. Wonderful. So that's the one only concert, right, of Boccherini will be the exactly, one on Thursday. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we will have like amazing musicians that actually play um, at the SPCO. Okay. Uh, so yeah, so it's, it's going to be Chamber exactly the mm -hmm. St. Paul Chamber Orchestra and it's going to be a really beautiful concert. And that's a beautiful venue, by the way. Oh, yeah. Gorgeous sound and St. Really Mark's wonderful. Cathedral. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. really cool. Loring Park, no? Yeah. Well, and then Thursday, um, March 3rd, um, the 25th and 26th, the 26th is, what's the 26th? Tell me. Ah, uh, uh, yeah, Rediscovering Spain, also at the Cathedral of St. Mark's. Mm -hmm. And tell us about what's happening with, uh, ¿Qué va a pasar con Rediscovering Spain? Bueno, Rediscovering Spain va a ser un concierto muy especial a cargo de un grupo español. Van a venir desde España. Y bueno, este grupo se llama Academia del Piacere, oh. aunque tienen un grupo, tienen un nombre eh, italiano, pero es un grupo español. <risa> y bueno, ellos van a presentar un concierto de música que fue a Sudamérica y que también mm. volvió a España. Va a ser un concierto muy bonito. El, el líder del grupo se llama Fami Alcai y él es, digamos, el mayor virtuoso de viola da gamba, que es un instrumento barroco. Mm -hmm. Y bueno, la verdad que es un lujo tener a este grupo aquí por primera vez en Minnesota. Lindo. So there's going to be, there's also an important concert the next night on Friday, February 26th, also in St. Mark's Cathedral, which again is an amazing venue, called Rediscovering Spain. It's by a group from Spain, and you'll have to repeat the name for me, sorry. Academia del Piacere. Yeah, it's the Academia del Piacere, which is a part of Italian name. And um, they're going to be featuring music, uh, including uh, one of an old, old music called the viola... Da gamba. Da gamba, yeah, which is, which is a really ancient music and is, has a gorgeous sound. It's, it's kind of like a cello, but maybe even more deep and more impressive. Exactly. Yeah, so that's going to be really cool. That will be Friday, uh, excuse me, um, fr yes, Friday, February 26th, once again at St. Mark's Cathedral in Loring Park. And then um, coming up, uh, the next concert will be on March 3rd, mm -hmm. and that's the Sephardia music from Spain, and that will be at the Beth El Synagogue at 5224 West 26th Street in St. Louis Park. And, uh, uh, well, cuéntanos de la música Sephardia. Bueno, eh, la música sefardí es otro de los de la música, digamos, española que se podría considerar española, uh -huh. que es también menos conocida en la, digamos, en la cultura occidental. Eh, entonces, bueno, se trata de la música que, que fue compuesta. Bueno, no, digamos, compuesta fue más bien like, eh, se trasladaba oralmente eh, y fue música de estilo medieval, mucha de ella mezclada con música árabe, con música española de, de la Edad Media. Es un, es un género muy interesante. Y, y bueno, para este concierto también contamos con dos maravillosos músicos sirios. Que, bueno, que por ejemplo, el, el músico que va a tocar el oud, que es un instrumento que se tocaba en aquella época. I love oud. <laughs> que se tocaba en la música sefardí, se toca en toda la música árabe. Bueno, pues el... La persona que va a tocar el Lud se llama San Rafea y digamos que es uno de los mayores virtuosos del mundo del Lud. Él antes vivía en Siria cuando todavía se podía estar allá mm. y bueno, eh, ganó la, competi el, la competición internacional del Cairo y bueno, digamos que también es un lujo que esté aquí. Y Nerea, ¿tú, uh, ¿tú vas a participar también con sí. esta música, tocando, cantando? Yo voy a cantar, sí. Oh, okay. ah, qué bueno. Sí, he estado investigando la música sefardí, he estado... He estado ya varios meses investigando esta música y bueno, hemos seleccionado, seleccionado varias piezas 
y voy a cantar algunas de ellas, sí. Wonderful. Well, um, I can talk about that, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, we, Sephardic music. Yeah, we actually love Sephardic music on this show, and we played it a fair amount. It's one of my personal loves. So Sephardic music is a music that uh, we associate with the Jews who were expelled from Spain, but which is a real amalgam of medieval music, Arabic music, of course, um, very ancient stuff, and it's usually sung in the... What is it called? It's called the uh, Ladino, Ladino, which Ladino, is the exactly. ancient form of Spanish. And so there's going to be there are going to be a couple musicians from Syria who are amazing. One of whom is called uh, Esam Refea. Uh, Esam Refea, mm -hmm. who's a master of the oud, mm -hmm. uh, which is a really important Middle Eastern instruments played all over you know, Tunisia, places like that. And Nerea will be singing. And Nerea will be singing. In Ladino. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Which was wonderful. It's gorgeous music. I can't recommend this enough. I hope to be there. We'll talk about the other shows in just a few minutes. Just to remind you that you're listening to Corazón Latino here in KFAI. It is 121. And this is KFAI, your community radio. Let's take a musical break, listening to some music from a disc called Rediscovering Spain that our guest brought for us. And this is uh, called Canarios, and it's by Gaspar eh, Sanz y Fahmi Alf. Alki, al, 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 al and tell us about this music. <laughs> well, as uh, well, this is the concert that Academia del Piacere will be performing. Okay, ah, so you wonderful. will be able to listen some like um, some typical dances from the Baroque time, like as Canarios. Like in this mm -hmm. case, it's going to be a Canario, and yeah, it's, it's about like uh, this music is very improvisatory. It's very fun. You will listen also the castanets. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like a mixture between Baroque music with flamenco, mm -hmm. with dance, mm -hmm. with like folk music. Mm -hmm. So here, a taste of what's coming up at the end of this month, Casa de España. Just music there um, from bueno. What uh, explain to us exactly which concert that would best be related to this the this kind of music? Well, this is the the music that uh, will be sung during the concert of Academia del Piacere. This concert is going to be on Friday, February 26, and the name of the concert is Rediscovering Spain. Wonderful. Ah. 
Once again, you are listening to Corazón Latino, and we have uh, our guests Nerea and Marisa from the Casa de España talking about the Festival of Music, and we're going to talk about the two remaining nights of the festival right now. Um, on Thursday, uh, oh, we talked about the Sefardía, so now we're going to the Codex Trujillo de Peru. Now, I was listening to this music uh, on YouTube. It's just incredibly beautiful. It's very ancient music, no? Yeah, it is. Uh, well, this is a codex that was written during the 18th century mm -hmm. in Trujillo, mm -hmm. Peru. Mm -hmm. So, well, this is actually like the Jesuits during the colonial time. They went mm -hmm. to, like, to all these places like Peru, like South America, mm -hmm. to try to like the, to bring the like the Christian faith to the native. So, um, well, there there was a priest that was um, called Baltasar Man Martinez de Compañón. Mm -hmm. And he basically what he did was just take like the music that the these native people will sing and just like just transcribe it into a codex. Uh. And actually these people were also listening to the like the colonial music, so it's a great mixture between like the um, Peruvian folk music and like the Western classical music. Oh how interesting. That is really, really interesting. Very beautiful ancient music, and that's uh, in the Codex de Trujillo. Nereo will also be singing, yes. and Zach, who's actually with us in the studio um, <laughs> uh, as a support staff, and uh, he will be playing, support person. Pl singing also. And uh, <laughs> well, there will be a trio of musicians. Actually, maybe uh, is there another singer also? No, I okay. will be singing. Actually, Zach is going to be playing viola da gamba. Oh, oh viola, da gamba. viola da gamba. Wonderful. Wow. And then there will be some other Who musicians knew? playing too. We have a very so, talented crew in the studio. Yeah. <laughs> so that will be very ancient, very beautiful music. And then um, on Saturday, March or, uh, 5th, the Spanish and Argentinian art songs will be the topic. That's at 7.30 p.m. at the McPhail Center for Music. Five, and this is their new place, 501 South 2nd Street in downtown Minneapolis, or near downtown. And um, Argentinian, tell us about art songs. Well, so, well, this concert is going to be like a totally different style. Mm -hmm. We are going to go to the 20th century, to the beginning of the 20th century. Mm -hmm. So um, at this time, uh, composers were very obsessed with um, recovering the folk music. Yes. So what they did was just to take like folk songs and try to like re like arrange them again to sound like the like in the fashion of the time like uh, mm -hmm. yeah like the composition of like, advances and so it's like a it's like a mixture of folk music with like 20th century like um, classical music. Mm -hmm. So there are like for example Guastavino like his music is like he he was one of the most important composers from Argentina and his music is very like melancholy style like a lot of like um do, do it, it's tango fado yeah tango <laughs> there is some mm -hmm. some like uh, about tango uh, yeah it's it's, it's, a, it's a great it's mm -hmm. a great mixture also between like uh, different cultures and it, this is basically the spirit of the festival the mixture between like Spain and different cultures and what like the wonderful uh, music that this has created Actually. Yes, that is true. But for that mixture, we our show would not exist, frankly. Yeah, you know? exactly. And Nereo will be singing uh, some of these songs. Yeah, I'm going to mm -hmm. be doing this recital with um, Ainoa Urquijo, the pianist. But tell me about this artist. Well, she's... Um, Ainoa Urquijo. Yeah, she's, Urquijo. An, she's an Urquijo. artist from Spain. Mm -hmm. She actually lives uh, in Rochester, mm -hmm. Minnesota. And she's a wonderful pianist. Mm. And she's actually a specialist in this period of time in music. So I see there will be a drawing on the talents of many musicians who we might normally hear, not hear, exactly. uh, in the typical venues that we, well, because we don't hear this music anywhere. That's right. <laughs> Wonderful. Um, this is a beautiful festival with a variety of venues, once again at the St. Mark's Cathedral, at the Bethel Synagogue in St. Louis Park, and at the McPhail Center for Music. and. Can people buy passes for the whole, for the entire um, event? Or is, I, I see they're very reasonable if you're a member that you have a, d a discount, but uh, very reasonable uh, entrada price. But I was just wondering if, if you know about, you know. Anyway, for more information, you can go to um, www.ismfestival.org. 
or to the Casa de España. Uh -huh. Yes, we had some schools who showed some interest in the festival as well, so we created a special offer for teachers and students, mm -hmm. and all the details will be uh, on the website. And uh, we were thinking about doing passes, but the performers are very high quality. We tried to come to the lowest that we could so everybody could have foreseen them. Uh -huh. And um, we believe it's something very reasonable. Going to one concert or two would be of course. a good sampling of what we have to uh -huh. offer this. But, uh, well, fascinante. I, uh, thank you so much for coming in and uh, talking about this. And I know you wanted a, a few last words before well, we say goodbye. Thank you. I want to thank you, Eve and Carla, for having <laughs> us on KFAI. I also want to thank the Metropolitan Regional Arts Council for the support, as well as U.S. Bank, the Spanish Embassy in Washington, D.C., and all the volunteers and donations that have been made to make this possible, and also the huge support that we've been receiving from Bethel Synagogue. Uh, Wonderful. Yeah. Well, thank you for putting it together, and we look forward thank to this. Uh, wonderful International Spanish Music Festival once again coming up on February 25th and 26th and then on March 3rd, 4th and 5th here in the Twin Cities. Once again for more information go to www. Oh, only three of those. <laughs> is.ismfestival.org Muchísimas gracias Thank por haber venido. Gracias. 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 Estrellas le siguen, morena, morena, y la luz al sol va de apuesta, señora, morena, morena, que esos ojos son va de apuesta, señora, morena, morena, que esos ojos son. Esos ojos son...